Woo! I don't know about you guys, but I about dropped my coffee this morning when I saw that the new Giants Editor 10 came out. I have slowly been adding more and more tutorials to my little arsenal here. I have a whole playlist on my channel if you are interested in learning more about modding. So let's get into installing the editor. After you've created an account on the GDN network here, you are going to be able to log in and you're going to click on download. Once that pops up here, we're going to click right here where it says Giants Editor V10 0-1. So excited. You guys ready for me? You'll find where you want to uh, download it at here. I'm just going to throw it in my downloads. Let's walk through and install this here. So you'll go through and read all this like they expect us to read all this. Look at all that crap. Essentially, they own your mod when you make it. We're going to hit accept and we're going to let it install in its program files, giant software, because I have previous versions installed. I want it to install in the same folder that it created for. Uh, we're going to create some shortcuts. Yes, I want the desktop like on going to extract now. Not going to view the readme. I'll read that on my own. And then we're going to not hit run on the application yet. We're going to hit finish. We're going to pop back on the GDN's website really quick. And then we're going to find where it says Blender Exporter Plugin V10. You want version 10 Farm Sim 25. And we're going to get that downloaded right now. I'm going to save that into here. Nice, nice. Now let's uh, let's just click on it, see what it does. Rocks and roll. Blender 4.0. Going to basically auto install the plugin from what I can see. So let's just it install see if that works this exporter files have been successfully installed now if this does not work for you then you need to go through and uh reread that and basically here it says you can extract manual the files and this might be the route that you have to go and then just google search how to install plugins blender there is a ton of professionals who just straight up work in blender all the time that can show you how to install that a little bit more deeply but we've already hit install, so let's rock and roll. Okay, I have my Blender 4.0 up, and I have a previous version of the Giants i3D exporter installed. Now, what we're going to end up doing is uninstalling that and putting the new one in. I can totally still show you how to do this. We're going to go up to Edit right here, and we're going to go to Preferences. From there, we will dive into the Add-ons section. From Add-ons, we will up here. Make that a little bigger for you. From add-ons, we are going to look for giants. 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 And I can't spell. The coffee has not kicked in yet. Uh, then we're going to look right here. See, I have an old one installed and I have a new one. And I'm actually going to uncheck this old one. Bye. Bye, friend. And we're going to recheck this new one here. Okay. After that's all done, we want to click on save preferences there. It is set up to auto save, but we're going to hit save preferences. Super stoked, super stoked. All right, could be it. Look, look at our new Giants Editor tool. I want you like up here. Can we come up here? I don't want you so low. I, I will be making a video deep diving into what all this stuff means. I happen to have a book that tells me everything and I will share that information with you in future episodes. I just wanted to keep this as simple, easy, get it installed, and then we'll dive a little bit deeper in the future episodes. I've been watching all these videos of everybody showing you how to download Giants Editor. But nobody really covers the preferences on what to set it up before you actually start trying to convert or export stuff. So with Giants Editor 10 open, we're going to come right up here and go up to File. We're going to go Preferences. And it's going to bring up this little window here. I'm going to walk you through what everything says here and what different settings that you want. Uh, you want warnings. You want to show warnings. You want to enable your update notifications. Probably not import i3D as reference. Leave that unchecked right now. Under logging, that's going to be the editor log. It'll show you any potential errors that the game sees before you put it in game. And that's pretty much already set up, but you can go track down that text file if you just follow that path. Save and export as wave OBJ. Now, this is basically when you're exporting out to Blender or Maya, um, you have the option to come up here and go export selection and it'll give you i guess we need to do this first come up here you go to export selection and it will give you the save type as you'll be able to export to obj now what that preference does right there with the scaling is it will scale it up to 100 so when you load it up into blender it'll, it'll just be monstrous looking similar to something like this it'll scale it at 100 while your normal object 
is still at normal size. Next, we are going to set up our text editor path. So we are gonna decrease that scale from 100 to just one. We want it to export as is, same size, everything. Just leave it as one. Next, grab into your text editor path. We are gonna locate our Notepad++. If you don't have that installed, go check it out. I do have a previous video on some tips and tricks that I used for FS22 that so far I don't see why those tricks wouldn't transfer over to FS25. I'll put the that video up in the cards right now if you want to go watch that and how to install that text editor. But we're just going to locate where that file is right now. For me, it is under my main C drive, Program Files, and we will see right here it says Notepad++. Might be different for you, but hopefully that helps you locate it. Once you find it, you're going to go for the .exe file. We're going to double click on that and it's going to load it in here. Now, when we click on edit I3D in text editor up here in the top left corner, that will open up in uh, the text editor it makes it so much mo so much smoother if you need to do I3D changes. Now, I have not installed Giant Studio Path. Uh, I will probably do that in a future episode. If you guys would like that, leave a comment down below and I will totally get on that. I don't use the studio too much, but I've been learning more and more about it. It seems pretty cool. Uh, the game installation path it should automatically find this for you if not you need to go find the, your farming simulator folder like i have the game on steam right now so i'm going to track down that fs25 folder it'll have like your data and all that other stuff in there uh the editor language obviously kind of self-explanatory there what i do love about this this is cool i gotta give it to him this is a neat one custom primitives now what exactly is a primitive but this right here is a primitive they call it's just a an object so we have cubes in here we have pyramids you know and these these are what's called primitives what i thought was really neat is we could put our own in there i this probably you probably save it as an f uh fbx file i haven't like tried to do that yet but i just noticed this and this is freaking awesome all right moving on to the next thing sorry a little excited there Moving on to the viewport tab, I would say that leave everything stock in here. Um, may maybe you want to make your gizmo size a little bit smaller. I usually drop mine down to one just so it's easier to grab it when when we're doing that kind of stuff. Gizmo size 10. No, I, I wanted the one, not 10. As you go down here, the grid, you can enable the grid, this thing, and you can make those smaller as well. You need some lines to follow. Object clip mask. Uh, let's just do set that to like 300. That's usually the stock in game one. Another really cool thing, the background color. In one of my previous videos I did for FS22, I had kind of complained at the very beginning about dark mode. And this is really close to dark mode because my eyes staring at the screen all day long, as far as with this editor and how bright it is, you can now change the background color. I'm super stoked. This 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 was a good intent. Good, good install. Now, can we get dark mode for the rest of the ding? Okay, moving on to scripting. This, for the most part, if you're watching this video, you have no need for scripting as of right now. That is a little bit deeper of a dive, but we'll get into possibly if you guys leave comments below and you kind of want to learn a little bit more about this, mainly used for maps for doing like automatic uh, procedural trees and roads and whatnot go into shortcuts you can familiarize yourself this really hasn't changed too much this is all the little buttons and you can press so when I remember when I first got started I was I accidentally tapped the, the the W key or the E key or the R key and what that does is it changes the the gizmo to be rotate translate or scale and just accidentally bumping these keys until I dived into the shortcuts and I was like oh Definitely some good information. If you're confused on how to use something, this is going to kind of show you what key to use. So that being said, let's hit apply. And there we go. Your Giants editor is all set up. The last move that you'd want to do is come up here to window. And we're going to click on material editing. This is going to open up this little panel down here. And this is basically how I have mine set up. I have the console up down here for any potential errors that pop up. I have the scenographs I can go through pick individual objects and edit them as needed and you have your attributes tag that edits the objects that's over here in the right hand corner and the material editing will allow us to add materials and colors and stuff like that i will let you guys choose the next video 
between the two different options. Either one, we go over Giants Editor here, uh, slowly clicking on the, the file to edit, the create, and walk you through as much as I know about this editor. Or option two, we dive into Blender and we take a look at the new i3D exporter and what all of its buttons do. That's a little bit more advanced, but if you guys want that, we will dive into that. Leave a comment down below telling me which one we should do next. On that note, guys, hit the like button on your way out. I will see you in the next one.